Welcome back to consecutive day 1233, the diary of a rumpreneur. And uh, today I want to talk to you about the reality of running streaks after a marathon. So remember to give this a subscribe, share, like and comment as the more people we get in front of, the more money we raise on my fundraising mission to save the lives of children by attempting the ultimate ultra marathon. All the information about the challenge taking involved is in the link in the comments below. Thank you as always, and let's get started. So, consecutive day 1233 of a diary of a rumpreneur. And um, yeah, topic today is the reality of running streaks and running the day after a hard marathon. So, um, yeah, so yesterday I ran the 10th anniversary Yorkshire Marathon um, around the beautiful city of York. Um, really nice marathon. Um, I would like to say I enjoyed it, but I didn't. Um, I did manage to miraculously run a PB of uh, 3 hours, 24 minutes and 48 seconds. So I got just under the uh, 3 hour... 25 minute marker and um, which beats my previous personal best of 3 hours and 38 minutes so it's pretty significant PB. Um, I'm super stoked about it because it's it was on day, consecutive day, 1232 of, uh, of daily running uh, averaging 7.5 kilometers a day so all of the leg fatigue, the no lack of tapering, the no post recovery um, ability that, that most marathon runners will have when they run a marathon had none of that so um, super super proud of myself for doing that also Yorkshire Marathon is people say oh yeah it's quite a flat marathon that's probably people who live in uh, hilly areas <laughs> unlike me who live in the flat fens of Cambridgeshire but um, it certainly wasn't flat there was some pretty significant hills and some pretty long substantial sustained hill uh, running which is sapping on the legs um, but one thing you may have noticed if you can see my feet today I'll just try and get it down to my feet is I'm wearing one of my Vibram uh, V-Trail 2.0 shoes uh, which is my barefoot footwear and I'm wearing one Croc uh, so you might be thinking that is a strange rate of running and I'm currently averaging 8 minute 40 kilometer pace so I'm shuffling along very slowly now Bizarrely, this isn't because of my legs. My legs feel miraculously okay. If I, if I wasn't struggling with injury, I would be running pretty normally. Um, so my powers of recovery on my legs is, is unbelievable. When I think back to my first ever marathon run, I could barely walk for a week, I had to go down the stairs backwards, all these things. But my legs have this quite phenomenal tolerance now due to the, um, the strength they've built up over 1,233 days of consecutive running. Um, but yeah, the reason for the shuffling and the thing, um, I had probably the most horrendous blister you could ever imagine to experience. Um, 30 kilometres in this marathon yesterday, um, I, um, I, uh, I felt what can only be described as a, like a snap. It, it, it sounded, it, you could actually hear it, it sounded like the snapping of a, um, of a tendon or a ligament. It was, it was like, like kind of snappy sound to it which is horrendous and what it actually was it was a blister that had been building up on the left side of my foot popping and uh, that was at 30 kilometers and it was really sore at the time and I had a couple of choices I could either carry on or I could slow down and try and nurse it home but uh, I chose to carry on I, was, I knew I was on for a decent time I knew I had 12.2 kilometers still to go which is quite daunting at that stage of a marathon when you're already starting to feel the, the pain, um, but I, I just had to grind it out. I knew I was on for a good time, so I wasn't going to let that slip. I put 30 kilometers of effort in, and um, every stride was was pain. It was almost like wincing pain every stride, 12 and 12 and 12.2 kilometers, which was horrendous. And then, lo and behold, I get home, uh, get back with uh, with my great time. And to be honest with you, I probably had a little bit more in the tank. It was the it was the injury. So my foot which was slowing me down gradually from the 30 kilometer mark in 
Um, I think, had I not had that injury, I may have been able to have had an outside shot getting closer to, to 3 hours 20, but something to aim for in the future. Um, but anyway, when I got back, took my sock off, um, I knew it was bad because blood was through the shoe, through the sock. And when I took my sock off, um, probably a five centimetre squared area of the sole of my foot, the skin, my son's with me, he's already hear this, it had been ripped off the left hand side sole of my, of my foot to reveal, you know, that ready, bloody underskin, which is um, it was real grim. And I couldn't, I was so stiff at the end of the race when I sat down, I couldn't see under my foot, so I couldn't realise how bad it was. But then I looked over and saw the faces of, of uh, about six other runners who were, who were walking past. And they said, mate, you need to go get some medical treatment for that. Uh, so I went to get medical treatment and it's all been dressed. But um, yeah, the reality is, is um, it was horrible. It was horrible. And, and as a result of having to keep running, I'm, uh, I'm in a crock because the padded bandaging that, and the dressing that I've had to put on it I can't fit my foot into a normal uh, my normal footwear, so uh, it's probably one foot croc, one foot um, traditional footwear for the next few days. And hopefully, it'll start to heal. The, the, the danger of a blister of that magnitude is the risk of infection, so I have to try and make sure it's dressed and kept clean every day. Um, and it's really sore. You know what it's like? A small blister. And you've got one that's probably five to ten times the size of a normal blister. It's um, and it's ripped the skin right off. It's, um, yeah, pretty tough going. So these are the reality of uh, running streaks and marathons. Um, my learnings from my diary for today are that, you know, injuries happen and you get hit with adversity uh, regularly during a marathon run of such a long, prolonged period of time. There's always things that are gonna go well and there's always things that are not gonna go so well. And it's how you handle adversity which can really make the difference. And um, I had a choice. I could have stopped, which would have been probably the sensible thing to do, but I chose to continue and power on through and, um, and be as resilient as I could. It was horrible. My pace slowed to a degree, but I managed to get home and I still managed to get that PB. So I'm very, very proud of myself for doing that. But um, the, the lesson really is, is that adversity is there for all of us. It's how we handle it. And we've always got two choices. We can stop or we can carry on. And I'm not saying carrying on is always the right choice. In this instance, I believe it was, despite probably making the injury far worse than it was at the time. But um, it's amazing what the mind can overcome when you, 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 you bite down on that gun shield and keep swinging. So anyway, that's pretty much it for me today. Uh, I've got my son, my youngest son, James, with me today. He's very kindly come out to support me with this injured foot. So thank you very much, James. You can say hello. hello. And uh, that's pretty much it for me today. So uh, please do give this a subscribe, share, like, and comment as more people get one of your money raised on my fundraising mission to save lives of children by attempting the ultimate ultra mouth. All the information about the challenge and how you can get involved is in the link in the comments below. Thank you as always. Stay positive, stay happy. See you again tomorrow.